Welcome to my YouTube channel and to my train room. For this week's project, I'm going to do another freight car load. This time I want to represent a load of large packing crates in a gondola. Let's turn the camera around and show you what I have in mind. Here is a 40 foot gondola with four large packing crates in it. Now there's no reason why I can't run it just as it is. However, these crates I built with all the bottom detail, which is not necessary when it's in a gondola. These crates are earmarked for my harvest scene. And also I want them all attached together so that I can load it in one go. Now on my layout at the moment, I have four different sizes of gondola. I've got this high sided 40 footer. I got the Athen 50 foot gondola. I've got this one. It's supposed to be a 52 foot six, but it's actually only a 50 footer. And I got the 52 foot six drop in mill gondola. Now this Rock Island car is the same length but slightly narrower than this Athern car. So anything that I build for this one will also fit this one. So I don't really need to use that for measuring anymore. What I'd like to do is make multiple loads so that I have at least one that will fit any size of the gondola. The plan for this project is to use the cast resin crate ends that I sell. I have a nice big bucket of them, more than I need for this project. You'll notice some of them are different colours, that's because I've been experimenting with different samples of resin. They're pretty much interchangeable, so I'm not even going to concern myself with what colour the ends are, they're going to get painted anyway. There are five different sizes of end in this pile, and I can make the crates as long or as short as I want to, just by using more or less styrene between them. Well, I've cleaned up a whole load of crate ends. I've done a lot more than I actually need. The next thing to do is to figure out how wide the crate should be. Now, I've already determined that these two gondolas are narrower than all the others. So if they fit in here, they will fit into anything. Okay, that one is a little under 30 millimeters wide. This one is bowed in and it's only about 29. It's 30 at the ends. So if I go for a load that's no more than 29 millimeters wide, I know that I'm not going to have any trouble with any of the cars. I have here a sheet of Evergreen V-Groove um, Scribe Styrene. It's uh, eighth inch spacing. And when I made the patterns for the ends, I scribed them at an eighth of an inch with this in mind. So that if I got lazy and I didn't want to make my own scribe styrene, I could just buy it. I doubt this is going to be enough, but I do have a much bigger sheet as well. I'm just going to use this first though. And for the bracing, I'm going to make my own. I checked in my supply of strip styrene and I don't have a lot in the right size. So this is a sheet of 20,000 styrene, which approximately equates to two inch dimensional lumber in HO scale. I don't need the bracing just yet. First thing I need is to lay out my sheet to get the best usage with minimal waste. Well, I've decided that the majority of my crates are going to be a scale eight feet wide, which is 28 millimeters, a little bit narrower than the width of the narrowest gondola. So they'll be nice and loose. I won't have any problems with, uh, with tight fits. I get two rows of the tall crates. I get a row of lids for the tall crates. And then I get a row of sides for a medium crate and a row of sides for a short crate with no wastage.
I found that doing about six to eight crates at a time, by the time I've got one step done with all of them, the first one I did is, is strong enough to survive the next step. Whereas the relatively small batch prevents me from getting bored with one step. I have the first eight crates with the sides stuck on. Now I'm going to come around and attach the top. And I just remember why I hate using this kind of glue. Because it's just, it sticks everything, strings all over the place. And I end up in a big mess. Because despite my best efforts, I never managed to avoid getting it on my fingers. At least with styrene cement, it doesn't glue fingers. Now when I laid out the ends originally, I made sure that they were the right width for the top to be a whole number of planks wide. Now at the moment it's only getting glued on the on the two sides. I will come back and do the styrene to styrene joints later with a solvent. I don't know if you can see it in the back of the picture. Each crate has a lid laid out in front of it. That's because I cut two sides and a lid from each strip of styrene and I kept them all together ensuring that all three pieces are exactly the same width because they came from the same strip. Well I've got the first couple of steps done on 14 crates, um, eight of the tall ones, six medium. That's all I was able to get out of that one small sheet of scribe styrene. Anyway, these top corners are not glued yet. Those are going to be styrene to styrene bonds, so I'm going to use solvent. But since it's only 20 thou, I'm going to reinforce the corners. I could use evergreen square strip, like 80 by 80 or 100 by 100 or something. But I'm too cheap to waste expensive strip on areas that's not going to be seen. So I've just got some scraps of thicker styrene and I'm just going to chop them into approximate lengths. As long as it's shorter than that distance it will still work and that, and that will reinforce the corner quite nicely. Now before I can start adding the rest of the bracing some of them need a little bit of cleaning up around the edges where I assembled them less than perfectly. So let me go ahead and do that on a piece of sandpaper and then I will get on with the rest of it. As I mentioned earlier, I'm too cheap to actually use packets of uh, evergreen styrene strip because this project is going to use several packets and I'm, as I say, I'm too cheap. So what I've done is I've marked the width of a scale two by eight on a sheet of 20,000 styrene and I'm just going to cut my own. Well, I've cut a whole load of scale 2x8s. Some of the strips have a tendency to curve when cut with a knife, but that's okay. It's easy enough to straighten them up on the model as I'm gluing them. Now, there are several different bracing patterns that would make sense. So I could have quite a bit of variety if I want to, even in the same size crate. But since I want these to look as though they were all made by the same manufacturer, I'm going to stick with the same bracing pattern throughout. And what I think I'm going to do is put corner pieces around the sides and the top and a single diagonal on each of the three surfaces. This is one of those cases where it's easier to cut the pieces oversize and then trim them after the glue is set. So what I'm going to do is measure. The top pieces need to be a little over 30 millimeters. Well, 30 will work, so I'm going to do them around about 31 or 32, just so that I know that I've got enough. So let me get a good supply of those. Now that I have the two top pieces on all the crates, now I'm going to add the four vertical corners. But I'm going to do that before I cut these off. Here what I'm doing is going to put them up against the side like that. 
hard up against the uh, top pieces. I'll try to do this backwards so that you can see what I'm, I'm doing. Up there like that. And then I just repeat that three more times for each crate. And then that step is done. So now after all the crates are looking like this with all six pieces on, it's time to come back and tr trim the edges off. First starting with the four corners at the top. I'm trying to do this where you can see it on the camera. And then once it will lie flat on its side, come back and do the four bottom corners. And then that's that step done. Let's get them all to that stage and I'll come back and do the diagonals. The last construction step is to do the diagonals. This is a little bit more complicated because we have to cut each piece the right size to start with. Let's start by cutting the angle on the end. Put it where it needs to go. And mark it. In theory they should be the same length so I'm going to make two. Well that's these two sizes made. They're all ready for paint now. It's time to get my other sheet of scribe styrene out and make all the other sizes. One thing I might uh, point out is that although these crates are all fairly close, there are some minor imperfections and that's perfectly okay because after all your average packing crate is generally put together with a lot less care than are the contents. And also the, the lumber used may not be the best quality so there's likely to be a few warped planks so if you end up with some bowed or crooked edges that's perfectly okay. So anyway let me just put these aside and get out a much larger sheet of scribe styrene. I will check in with you again later. Now some of these crates I've deliberately made too wide for a gondola so they have to go on a flat car. These need a couple of extra steps because I can't leave the bottom off. I have to build that as well. So what I'm going to start by doing is putting some corner bracing in along the two sides and then I'm going to make a, a floor out of, out of plain 20 thou styrene before building up with the sticks underneath. So let me start working on those. I've just cut some strips. I cut these out of 60 thou styrene. That should give enough gluing area. I'll need that later. But for the time being, I just want strips that I know will fit in they need to be approximately an inch and a quarter so they go most of the length of the crate without being tight. And I'm just going to glue these in flush with the bottom. And when that's set up I'll just sand it lightly and then glue a bottom on it. I must apologise for the last couple of steps involved in finishing the basis of some of the crates didn't get recorded. That's my fault entirely. It's a fairly straightforward process and hopefully my viewers can figure it out. Next week I will concentrate on getting these crates turned into flat car and gondola loads. I hope to see you then. Thanks for watching and bye for now.